Good afternoon. My name is Keith Costigan. I am a solutions consultant here at TIPCO. And today I'm going to talk to you a little about, about TIPCO's data virtualization solution, uh, which is a solution that allows organizations to connect to disparate data sources right across the business, both inside and outside the business, to facilitate abstracting the underlying physical data environment for the purposes of creating a more granularized view of that physical environment to help support business decision making. So the first thing I'm going to do is to log into the TIPCO Data Virtualization Studio environment. So TIPCO Data Virtualization Studio is the development environment within which you create, create the connection to your physical data environment for the purposes of creating those aforementioned views. So let's start off by creating a project folder. And you do that within the shared, de shared development environment, uh, as opposed to my home, which offers individual developers a, a private concealed environment in which they can do development work um, on their own versus, of course, the, the shared environment, which allows for collaboration between developers. The first thing I'm going to do is create that project folder. Let's just call it project one. And now I'm going to create my first connection to an underlying physical data source. And in this particular instance, it's going to be a SQL Server database that contains customer information. So we right click on our project folder, new, and then new data source. First thing you notice, we have a lot of options when it comes to um, the number of data sources that we can connect to. We have a wide variety of data source adapters. Today, as I've mentioned, we're going to focus on a SQL Server environment that contains some of our customer information. And I'm going to enter the credentials and we should be able to connect to the underlying physical database. So now that I've entered the relevant credentials, let's create a connection and introspect that particular environment. Okay, so everything looks good so far. We now get the opportunity to inspect the underlying tables. And in this particular instance, we are solely focused on customer data. And here it is on the left-hand side, we have now created an abstraction within this environment of the underlying SQL Server database, including the customer data table. So for the next step, what I want to do is I want to take this data and I want to combine it with a separate source of information. In this particular instance, it is an order table that resides in a Postgres database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my project folder, right click on that project folder again, and we're going to create a new view. We call this view L1 view, L1 meaning level one. And this is level one in terms of the development that we've done today. So now we've created a palette upon which we can create the view. The first step is to drag and drop our customer data table. And I want to combine that with a table from a data source that we've connected to earlier. In this particular instance, it is an orders table that resides in a Postgres database.
So let's join these tables on a common relation, in this particular instance, customer ID. The next thing we want to do is we want to go down to our grid view, include the tables we want to include in this particular view. We want to take everything for the moment. Save this. Now let's run this. And as you can see, we now have a combined view of both tables residing in one individual view. And of course, you can see our L1 view over here, ready to be consumed as a resource as and when we actually require it. So the, the next thing I wanna do is I want to introduce a third data source. And, and this is to put particular emphasis on the uh, agility of this particular product um, in terms of its ability to deal with information in different formats. In this particular instance, I have an XML file that has information relating to products but I want to introduce that information into one of the views that I've created earlier, our L1 view, um, to give us a more holistic view of, for example, what our customers are buying in terms of products. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to connect to that particular XML data source. So back to our project folder. new data source, as we did previously. And of course, we're looking for file XML. Now I have an opportunity to enter the, the root path to the, the file in question. So once we've entered our root path, give the data source a name, and then subsequently create and introspect. You can already see our product catalog and then that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna finish connecting to that. And again, it now becomes an accessible data source over here on the left-hand side within the development environment. But of course, one problem we have with XML is it's not in a flat relational type format. So before we can use this information or we can create a join between this particular table and other tables that are relational tables that we've already made connections to, we have to do some transformation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transform the XML based information, the, the product catalog information we're gonna transform it into a more relational or a flatter type structure that we can utilize uh, more readily with other relational tables that we've already connected to. So back to project folder, right click, new transformation. In this particular instance, we're going to do an XSLT transformation. We're gonna focus on our product catalog. Hit finish. Now it's just simply a matter of taking those elements within the XML file that we want to focus on and transforming them. So you just so click on an item, create link and target.
and let's rearrange these items. Save. And now, as you can see be below, we have transformed this information from XML format into a flatter type format that we can now utilize in conjunction with the tables that we've used earlier in this particular demonstration to create our earlier views, our L1 view, for example. The next thing that I want to do is I want to bring together the XML product catalog information that we had earlier transformed. I want to bring that together with the view that we had created earlier to get a more holistic picture of what our customers are, are buying in terms of product. So I'm going to do as I did earlier to create the earlier view, um, the level one view. We're going to go to our project folder yet again, create a new view. We're going to call it view L2. Let's call it Now, introduced into this L2A view, I want to bring product catalog. that we created earlier using the transformation engine, the XSLT transformation engine. I want to bring our L1 view in. And I also want to bring additional information from our Postgres database. I want to bring our order details table into this particular view. So now let's bring these tables together. Let's examine what common relations we have. Order ID. We have product ID between these two tables. Same process as before. Let's go to our grid view. Let's include everything that we want to include in this particular view. All the resources that we require. And of course, I mean, we always have the flexibility in this particular view to pick and choose which elements within tables we do or do not want to include in this particular view. For the purposes of this example, we're, we're going to leave everything as it is at the moment. And now we're going to run this view. Let's make sure everything is, is going as it should be. So now we have a greatly expanded view that consists of the three tables that we can see in our model here. And that is our level two view complete. Now you can create as many levels, or as many layers, development layers as you see fit. Ideally, we recommend that you do three layers. The first layer being the physical abstraction layer, the physical view. Second layer being the business layer or the canonical layer. So you're starting to create views based on business requirements that you might have. And subsequently, you can create a layer which is known as the, or what we would term the application layer. So that's the, the finished view essentially of the underlying physical uh, physical data source or sources that you're building these layers upon. Essentially, 
all of this is dependent on the actual end result in terms of what the consumers of information or the consumers of data when your organization require in terms of any of the development work, work that is, is done. So subsequently, what are the answers or what are the questions that they have of the underlying information and, and how best to, to provide them with the, the resources that they need to answer those questions? And that's essentially what's going to dictate what type of development you're doing here, how many layers you create and what types of views. So what happens once you've created the number of layers, the number of desired layers and the, uh, the views that satisfy the information requirements of the business? Um, once you've reached that particular point, the next thing that you need to do or would want to do is to publish those resources. And they can be published either as web services or indeed as a physical database. And so let's do that right now. That's just a simple matter of in this particular instance, right clicking on our L2A view, the view that we've just created. And you can see in the menu, we have the option to publish. So let's just click publish. And let's give this published view a name. to view, customer activity. Let's save it as a data source under And if voila, now we can see that our level two view is now a published resource that can be consumed by the organization. So if, for example, you are a Spotfire user, you then have the opportunity to connect directly using the uh, ad adapter that's specifically designed to work within this environment to connect to these various resources to do analysis, to create visualizations, uh, utilizing the, the capabilities offered by these individual views. And while we're on that point, uh, TIPCO data virtualization when used in conjunction with Spotfire is also known as advanced data services. And just to differentiate between the two, Essentially, advanced data services is a cut down version of TIPCO data virtualization. There are other aspects uh, to TIPCO uh, DV uh, that are not available within advanced data services, which is specifically designed for Spotfire users to uh, connect to uh, resources which are based upon virtualized views um, like the ones I've created this afternoon within the, uh, the studio development environment. So that concludes the presentation uh, stroke overview of TIPCO data virtualization. Um, I hope it was of use. Um, please do let us know if you have any outstanding questions as a result of what you've seen here today. And thank you very much for your time.